Good to see you everyone. My name is Robbie Howell. I love Age of Empires 2. I'm a game developer, I'm a history fan, and I like to put all those things together to create theory-crafted civilizations, units, and similar that I'd love to see implemented into the game in the future. If you're anything like me, then today you've seen videos and articles describing a potential Rome-themed DLC for AoE 2. I'm thrilled about this, I hope you're thrilled about this, but unfortunately it brings up a conundrum. I have a Rome-based civilization collab that I've had waiting in the wings for months now, but I haven't been able to get to it because I'm currently in the process of moving. So, once this, the, this news dropped, I realized I had to get off my sorry ass and pump out all of the stuff that I have that's blocking that Rome one from dropping so that those buggers don't steal my ideas again. Last time this happened was when the, the Dynasties of India DLC dropped. I had a Tamil civilization pretty much 100% ready to go, and the moment before I release it, literally, it was my next video, they drop an entire DLC with the Dravidians inside of it, and they just steal all of my ideas. It's just completely untenable to let that happen again. So, to that end, we're going to make this Rome video happen before the DLC drops. It'll be interesting to see how much my ideas line up with the devs. Probably almost not at all. Again, that Tamils idea I had was completely different from the Dravidians as they ended up being implemented, but perhaps I'll get to that at some point in the future. It would be interesting to kind of like remake a couple of existing civs to see where my ideas might vary from how they were actually implemented. But moving on, in case you haven't read the title, today's civilization will be... The Dutch, a spearman and economy civilization. As always, a comprehensive civ document can be found in the description, as well as my sources. Before we get started, a couple of quick disclaimers. I am not a historian, I just like the game, and I like to research things on Wikipedia. All my designs are completely untested. I have not the skills to implement them in any way, shape, or form. My build is also not informed by any other Dutch-themed civilization concepts out there on the internet, so I'm not plagiarizing anything here. And as a game developer, I tend to like to push the boundaries. I like complexity, I like variety, I like grounding, I like all this crap. Let's get into the history. So. The Dutch. When we are referring to the Dutch, we are actually referring to a number of different ethnic and political groups, especially during the medieval era. I would argue that Dutch history starts way back in about 400 AD, when a bunch of little fellows called the Frisians started to establish themselves in the swampy uplands of what we now know as the Netherlands. When the Goths started moving out of Germany, however, many of them ended up in the Frisii lands, and their amalgamation together created a brand new kingdom that took up a good chunk of the coastline and even spread into Denmark. Now, the Frisians were actually fairly well unified, enough so to even hold off the early Frankish Empire under Charlemagne. They were one of the few peoples of the time, this would be again like the 600s-ish AD, to actually fight off Charlemagne, at least the first time he tried to invade. I believe the second time he got the better of them and incorporated them into the greater Frankish Empire of the day. So he moved in, they had some fighting, and eventually he buggered off back to France. This, however, did expose a weakness in the, up until that point, pretty substantial Frisian defense of their lands. And what followed was a whole bunch of other factions, especially the, the Danes and the Germans and everyone, all trying to come in and get a piece of land for themselves while the going was good, and the Frisians were weakened by Frankish influence. And all of this immigration and warfare led to a massive fragmentization of the young Dutch lands breaking them down into a number of microstates that you probably still know the names of today. Places like Holland, and Friesland, and Flanders, and Utrecht, and Zeeland, and Gelders, and a whole lot more. At the time, I think there were like 20-something. This is just a list of the bigger ones that still exist to date, though now they are counties of the greater nation of the Netherlands. So, with all of these different little pieces coming together, what formed was a very, very loose federation of infighting kingdoms that took up much of today's Netherlands and Belgium. 
these peoples did have some ethnic connections to each other, but were for the most part completely distinct entities who were very easily bribed, coerced, or riled up into fighting each other, and that's just what the Burgundians did. This is reflected, of course, in the, the Lords of the West campaign that focuses on the Burgundians that was released in the DLC last year. A lot of that, or at least a, a chunk of it during scenarios four and five, I believe, are about Burgundian influence in the burgeoning Dutch kingdoms and how they kind of played them against each other and took different political sides in order to destabilize the power of many other European lords in that area, especially Ms. Jacqueline of Hainaut, who we'll get to later on. But she wasn't the only one who had a lot of influence in the Dutch kingdoms. No, England had a ton of influence there as well. It's just a short hop across the channel, after all, and their languages are fairly similar. So it would make sense that the English would have a very strong interest in having influence in the Dutch regions. Even the Scots up north had some connections to the Dutch, though they were often quite divorced from European politics. As early as, I believe, the very late 13th century, a Dutch king attempted to declare himself King of Scotland, as well as the Dutch area that he was in control of. I believe it was Flanders. That was quickly vetoed by England, as you might expect, but it still showed that there was a connection between the two countries, and this connection would be deepened later on during the Great Habsburg Invasion. The Spanish Habsburgs had massive power in the 15th and 16th century, and with Protestantism, then seen as a great threat to the Catholic European majority, was starting to grow in the Dutch realms, the Habsburgs saw the opportunity to swoop in and take control over the fractured nation states. Under the leadership of the exiled William the Silent, a long-term revolt was formulated against the Habsburgs with assistance from both the English and the Scots. William, I believe, even ruled in exile from Scotland while all this was happening, and this led to the 80 years War, an incredibly protracted military action where Dutch peasants and freemen alike fought off the oppressive Spanish rule, eventually culminating in the Great Union of Utrecht. The Dutch peoples would come together and form a unified coalition for the first real time in their history. And so, while you could split a Dutch civilization into a bunch of hyper specific subcategories, such as Frisians and Hollanders and Flemish and all that, I I found that it was more parsimonious and clean to bring them together under the unified umbrella of Dutch, sweeping many of the differences between these factions slightly under the rug for the sake of clarity and simplicity in game design. Which is not something you'll often hear me say, but in this particular case, ain't no way I'm going to make ten different civilizations about all the different Dutch powers that were relevant at the time. With history done, let's move on to the flavor. The Dutch would obviously be a Western European civ in their architecture, with unique skins for the castle, monastery, and mill. A unique castle skin is pretty much par for the course these days. A monastery could be a cool way to show off their Protestantism, and the Dutch windmill is an absolutely iconic image, not to mention they have a couple of cool bonuses to the mill that I will get to later on. Their language would be Middle Dutch, Behoting, ladies and gentlemen. Their wonder could be the Hotekirk in Breda. This is a currently standing monument that I believe was refurbished at one point, but it was standing during the AoE2 relevant time frame, and it stands out pretty substantially to a bunch of the other Western European wonders, so I thought it would be a good pick. As per usual, I have a couple of characters who I think would be good representatives for an overarching Dutch campaign, all coming from relatively different time frames and backgrounds. So let's start with the oldest of these representatives, that being Floris V, also known as the God of Peasants. He was a Hollander, I believe a Count of Holland, who came to prominence in the mid-late 13th century. Um, he had a long-standing war with the Frisians and became incredibly well-liked because he tended to act in the interest of the peasantry rather than the nobility. He gained a lot of popular support and had something of an alliance with England, and he even embarked on a couple of very ambitious projects. You know the dikes that Netherlands is especially famous for today? Well, Floris V was possibly the first person to ever construct these. Unfortunately, he was a little too successful and perhaps a little big for his britches. He declared himself to be King of Scotland, and after that, his tenuous relationship with England somewhat fell apart, with uh, Edward Longshanks, I believe, actually orchestrating his assassination with, I believe, a couple of collaborators in Frisian lands. So overall, a really interesting guy. 
I'd say the only downside of a campaign starring him would be you'd be mostly fighting other Dutch players, though there could be plenty of other factions. It would just be primarily a Dutch on Dutch sort of situation. Moving on, we come to one of my favorite characters that I've ever encountered in researching this series, that being Hotopir. He was a famous pirate and mercenary who came to prominence a bit before the 80 Years War, I believe in the 1400s. Uh, Pier was a Frisian man from the north of the Netherlands, uh, and his country was being heavily occupied at that time by German mercenaries operating under the rule of the Burgundians and the Habsburgs. Allegedly, Pierre's family was brutalized by a couple of these German mercenaries, which led to him leading an incredibly interesting revolt against first the Germans, then the Burgundians, and then eventually the Habsburg Spanish. Um, he was again renowned as a pirate uh, and would do all sorts of cool raiding from the high seas, so a campaign featuring him would be a great chance to show off uh, the Dutch Navy. Not to mention, he was known for his massive size and ability to wield multiple giant weapons at once. I'm sure most of what is like listed about him online is legend, but even so, legend can be a valid basis for a campaign in Age of Empires 2, and so I'd love to see him star in a Dutch campaign as the protagonist. Lastly, we have less of a specific character and more of an overall situation. That being the Union of Utrecht, and more broadly, the Eighty Years' War leading up to this. I alluded to this earlier in the history overview. It's a very interesting piece of history, it's very nuanced, and there's a whole lot of time to cover. And it all culminates in the Dutch territories coming together to become a single republic, which I think would be a great capstone for the Civilization's campaign, and, and really show why it is being represented as the Dutch peoples rather than the individual provinces. Though I do feel like campaigns that aren't centered around a person often fall short, like body and things like that. They, they just aren't as interesting to me. I could see the Dutch showing up in a handful of existing campaigns that are currently in the game. Starting with my weakest idea, Joan of Arc 4 features the three cities across the river that you have to fight. Two are Britons and one is Franks, and you could have one of those represented by the Dutch. I believe this that campaign was happening in the north of France, so there is precedent for it, though Burgundians might be a better pick. Uh, additionally, in Barbarossa 1, when you have all of those different duchies that you have to conquer, one of those could be represented by the Dutch as well. Where I think that they are an obvious shoe-in is in the Burgundian campaign. Both scenarios 4 and 5 greatly involve the Dutch and are a good showcase of Burgundian meddling into their lands during the reign of Duke Philip, so it's obvious that those should be swapped out. But beyond that, I couldn't really find too many good examples of where to put the Dutch. I, I honestly thought there'd be a lot more. Considering Western Europe is, is very full in terms of Age of Empires representation, you'd think that the Dutch would show up in more campaigns, but I just couldn't find any. If you can think of any, please put them in the comments below. Uh, beyond that, though, I wanted to point out a couple other potential interesting campaign ideas that I didn't find to be quite as compelling as the three I listed. First of all, and this guy nearly made the cut, was Radbod, King of Frisia. This guy was one of the first great leaders of the Frisians during their early days, like during the time of Charlemagne, uh, well before the time frame that is being represented in these other campaigns that I've listed. Here's a cool guy. He was much more of a you know, tough barbarian, like fighting the Vikings and the Franks and, and the Gothic tribes. And he's a very interesting dude. Uh, the downside is my build for the Dutch, as I'll get into in a second, has a big focus on kind of late game gunpowder eco stuff. Uh, and Radbod obviously came well before Gunpowder. Even so, there there is precedent for certain scenarios and campaigns taking place uh, anachronistically to when a civilization's design seems to place it, um, such as the, the Seljuk scenario. What is it called? Manzikert, that's the one. Uh, and so Radbod could be somewhere in that vein as well, maybe as a one-off scenario. Uh, additionally, there's something called the Drenther Crusade, which is another Dutch fighting Dutch thing, though in this case, um, it was one of the earliest religious schisms that happened within the Dutch lands. I found it to be quite an interesting topic that I never really heard about, a, a crusade within European lands against a European country. Uh, and yet, it once again is not like particularly compelling in comparison to a lot of the other um, a lot of the other stories I have listed here, like Floris V, who I think does that topic a lot better. Uh, the Franco-Flemish War is a classic. The Battle of Golden Spurs is one of the most famous events in Dutch history, and I think that a scenario just about the Battle of Golden Spurs would be fantastic, like as a Battle of the Conquerors style one-off. And there are a couple of direct references to it in my build. Uh, lastly, we have Jacqueline, the Countess of Hainaut, and obviously she features as the main antagonist of the Burgundian campaign. 
But as we have seen with, for example, Edward Longshanks, it can be fun to retell a campaign story from the perspective of a villain. And I think that Jacqueline has a lot more to offer than we see of her. So moving on, from all of this history, I derived, as I always do, a couple of major overarching themes that I used to inform my design of the Dutch civilization. First of all, the idea of unity against invasion. Even though the Dutch lands hold so many different ethnic groups with such distinct cultures, they often come together in the face of a greater opponent, and they're almost never on the offense. Instead, fighting off incoming aggressors to get them out of their get them out of their swamp. Hmm. Where have I heard that before? Additionally, commerce is another huge part of the Dutch medieval mythos. They've had enormous trade influence since well before the AOE2 relevant time frame, and can take credit for a number of major inventions during medieval times that I try to reference in my build, and that I only briefly got to reference in my history section. Just know that the Dutch states produced some of the greatest minds of the medieval era. And lastly, the Dutch have a very interesting relationship with water. As mentioned, they reclaimed a lot of land from the sea in order to farm it. But as I also mentioned, they didn't really ever go on the offense. And one of the major ways that they spread influence rather than battles by land was by commerce over the water. They had an incredible control over especially the North Sea area uh, during the Middle Ages. And as we know, this led to them being one of the greatest colonial powers in Europe during the 16 and 1700s. And with that, we come to the close of our history section. If you're not interested in Age of Empires and we're just here for the history, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment below, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. For all of you who stuck around for Age of Empires, let's go on to the specifics of my Dutch build. For starters, I list the Dutch as a spearman and economy civilization. Now, spearman is not a typical tag for civilizations, but as you'll see, they really have a major focus on the spear line specifically and being anti-cavalry more broadly. Going through their bonuses really quickly, the first and possibly most complex one is that farms can be built when partially placed in shallow water. This would work kind of like placing a dock, except at least one tile of the farm has to be on dry land rather than on a beach. When a farm is built in this way, it can be walked on and is treated like shallows. And when it goes fallow, uh, it still can be walked on. If a fallow farm despawns, however, any units on it that are land-based are shunted onto dry land like a relic coming off a transport ship. Moving on to their second bonus, Mills double as lumber mills, so they serve as a drop-off point for both food and wood and have both mill and lumber mill technologies, as well as having large bonuses to line of sight. This kind of allows them to take on the benefits of three buildings in one, mills, lumber mills, and the all-important outpost. Moving on, their trade carts only take half population and spawn a spear unit when destroyed. This will allow you to build a massive trade empire when the late game rolls around if you're in a team game, and the spears that pop out when the trade cart dies also only take half a population. If you happen to get raided, then the spears that pop out should be good against the cavalry destroying all of your trade units. Not to mention, if you happen to lose a trade cog on shallows, that will also produce a spear. Just a cool little perk. The half population is the main benefit of this bonus. Fourthly, their monks cost a lot less and train a lot faster. This may look disgusting on paper, but their monastery is actually very weak and limited, and so in practice this bonus just gives them kind of an alternative use for monks. Much in the same way that the Malay Battle Elephant bonus is very strong on paper until you realize that Malay Battle Elephants suck, and the bonus just makes them viable as an alternative to infantry spamming. And lastly, and possibly most importantly, market prices for the Dutch slowly renormalize. What this means is for the Dutch player alone, if their market is on the low side, like you can only sell 100 wood for 17 gold, for example, over time, that 17 gold will creep up to 18, 19, 20, etc. This only applies if you haven't sold at the market in a little while, really encouraging the Dutch player to kind of space out selling at the market. This bonus could possibly be insane in late game scenarios, but since you're often spamming the market there, I think the benefit it will give will be fairly minimal in comparison to if you were to space out selling over the course of the entire game. Moving on, their unique unit, the Burger, is a infantry villager hybrid. It has the same food cost as a villager, of course, with a little bit of extra gold tacked on, and it is actually able to gather resources, though it cannot build and repair, and gathers at a slower rate. Its stats are comparable to a longswordsman, though it is substantially weaker at first. 
Of note, though, it benefits from both villager and infantry-specific technologies. So once you have loom and handcart, the burger can become quite fearsome. Much faster than a swordsman, a little bit less damage and health, but also a massive bonus against buildings. It also does have some bonus damage that is more akin to a spearman than a swordsman. It kind of hybridizes the swordsman's specialization against building an eagle warriors with a spearman's specialization against cavalry. Not quite as good as either of them in either regard, but able to do both jobs fairly serviceably, and most importantly able to harvest resources when not on call. Secondly, the Dutch have a unique demo ship upgrade called the Hellburner. This upgrades from the heavy demo ship and is faster, has more blast radius, and most importantly costs less gold. More interestingly, ships that are caught within its blast radius will take additional damage over time. So it doesn't just have a strict damage upgrade, instead it catches those ships on fire for 10 seconds, dealing 50% additional damage over that period. An especially deadly alternative to the normal galleon fast fire ship wars that you see in Imperial Age water fights. Briefly touching upon their unique techs and team bonus, Urban Militias does exactly what it says on the tin, giving spear lines, skirmisher line, and burgers additional melee armor, as well as reduced damage from cavalry. There's that Battle of Golden Spurs reference I was talking about. About. But Hook Gun is one of the most interesting options available to the Dutch. This gives their fortifications and trade units a hand cannon projectile, allowing their castles and towers to lose a little bit of accuracy but gain a lot of damage as all of their arrows are swapped out for hand cannon shots. Trade units, trade cogs, trade carts, will actually fire a raw hand cannon projectile, allowing them to almost be used like conquistadors and making that half population benefit especially interesting when you can mass up a great fast moving spear spawning army of these guys to mow things down with their cannon fire. Lastly, their team bonus is simple, just makes their spear line train a little bit faster. With urban militias, this can allow you to spawn a very powerful defensive force very quickly if you're raided in Imperial Age, but otherwise is mostly an early game anti-raiding bonus. As always, more details can be found in my Civ doc linked below, including a lot of the specifics on how some of these bonuses work, some more raw numbers such as unique technology costs, and more besides. Go take a look if you're interested. So, based on what we see here, what would the Dutch civilization be good at? Well, unsurprisingly, I would say their strongest suit would be their economy. They have a great tech tree, first of all, with pretty much all of the relevant technologies there and ready for you, especially, you know, guilds for the late game, two-man saw crop rotation, the works. Uh, they have a very tricky playstyle with their renormalizing market and their doubling mill and lumber mill and the farms that can be put on water. It's just a lot of little incremental useful things that allow their economy to be flexible in the face of a bad map spawn or as the game progresses into Imperial Age. More importantly, the fact that their trade units and burghers can fight allows a large portion of their economy to also be usable in military. You don't have to worry as much about population space being wasted on soldiers if you can put those soldiers to work when the fighting dies down. Not to mention the fact that these units are very good at defending you against raids and standing up to raids themselves once late game rolls around and you have to focus on battling at the front. This powerful economy is only supplemented by the Dutch focus on counter units. They have the Spearman, they have the Skirmisher, they have the Burger, all of which are fully upgraded. They do have Hussars, but those Hussars are pretty weak and missing Bloodlines and the final armor upgrade. So you can't count too much on those, and they don't have the Camel, making them slightly worse than civilizations like the Byzantines in the counter unit department. That being said, their ability to crank out powerful spears is pretty much unparalleled, hence their identification as a spearman civilization. The fact that urban militias make their spears so tanky, especially against enemy cavalry, the fact that they can train them faster, and that their trade carts spawn half-population spears means you'll have more spears than your opponent knows what to do with, and will pretty much force them to tech into units like the Arbalest, like the Hand Cannoneer, etc., which your elite skirmishers should be able to deal with handily. Urban Militias really is the backbone of this counter unit strength. My guess is that most Dutch players would want to pick this thing up as soon as they start heading into Imperial Age, assuming they have a castle up by then. Lastly, the Dutch have an excellent navy, probably the best navy of any of the civilizations I have created. Besides having all dock technologies, they have the incredible power of the Hellburner, which in my estimation will be a swinging point in late game Imperial Age water fights. 
even if you can kill most of the Hellburners coming at you, they are even faster than a heavy demo, and just one getting through could destroy your entire fleet due to the additional blast radius and the bonus fire damage. So be afraid. Hellburners are scary. And lastly, even if it's a little more tangential, the mill and farm bonuses should be a lot of help on water maps. They'll give you more room on land to devote to things like more farms, houses, etc. And the mill thing will not only save you space and a little bit of wood early game, but the extra line of sight could help at checking for when enemy ships are trying to circle an island to get to your fishing fleets, for example. Beyond those major strengths, the Dutch have pretty decent defenses, with almost a complete university, though missing siege engineers, and the hook gun unique technology. Though that reduced accuracy can kind of suck, having your towers able to shoot hand cannon projectiles seems to me at least to be pretty brutal, not to mention the fact that your castle will fire a whole barrage of them. So in my estimation, hook gun will put the Dutch at a pretty great position once they can hit Imperial Age and research it. Before then though, they'll have to rely on their exceptional counter units. Gunpowder, as you can see, is kind of a sub-theme of the civilization, and gunpowder does tend to be a little bit better on defense than on offense for civilizations like the Dutch, who don't have siege engineers for good bombard cannons. As a funky offbeat option, the Dutch also have a really cool monk rush. They are, as mentioned, missing a lot of key technologies. Their monks are crap if you look at them in a vacuum, but with the bonus, the fact that you can spam them for relative cheap allows you to have a kind of a quantity over quality situation, uh, both good for arena if you want to grab early relics, and great for reacting to incoming enemy knights. You usually won't have these key monk technologies researched if you're reacting to a knight rush, so having them able to pop out at a moment's notice and convert one of four enemy knights can really swing the situation in your favor and divert what is otherwise likely to be a pretty disastrous mid-game. But as you might imagine, the Dutch are far from good at everything, and I'd say their greatest weakness is their lack of power units. They don't have a lot of the haymakers that we're used to seeing on other civilizations, lacking two-handed swordsmen, arbalest, paladin, siege on jerk. They really lack for power and pretty much have to rely on hand cannoneers and Bob Mar cannons without siege engineers. Other than that, you're mostly going to be flooding your opponents with trash, which is not a great way of cracking a really tough defensive position. They also don't have a couple of really useful technologies for said power units. No thumb ring, no bloodlines, those alone would be bad, but they also miss siege engineers. So once again, once you hit Imperial Age, you'll need to go for quantity over quality, as well as mixing in things like your weird trade carts into an army composition to allow you to have a little bit more mobility and somewhere to dump your gold when hand cannoneers just don't cut it. Might not be surprising for a civilization that specializes against cavalry, but their cavalry is not very good. And since we are in a very cavalry-focused metagame these days, and frankly, for the past five or six years at the very least, it might be difficult for the Dutch to close out a game when they have to rely on cavaliers without bloodlines and plate barding armor. They also don't have a fantastic early game. A lot of their eco bonuses are either kind of tangential or are focused on the late game. And so early on, you mostly have to just use your spears reactively to fend off incoming scout raids and pray that you can get to castle before your opponent has too much advantage. They don't really have any sort of power spike until Castle Age, and so a fast castle I think is going to be almost always the strategy you want to use, unless you want to opt for some sort of surprise rush that your opponent isn't expecting. What a perfect segue. Let's consider what sort of tactics this Dutch civilization might actually use in-game. For the early game, as mentioned just now, you have to hunker down and age up. You have your spearmen, but you don't really have much else, and as such, it's pretty imperative that you get to castle age. You do have your market, which will renormalize over time, and so aggressive use of that seems imperative. I think the market will give the Dutch player a real chance to get into the castle age faster than their opponent might be ready for. I'd say the exception to this is if you are on water. You do have excellent water bonuses, and so getting water as soon as possible and relying on your stable economy and tangential bonuses to pull you through to Imperial Age is going to be really important. Once you get Imperial, though, you'll be great on water. As you hit the mid-game, you have a couple of big power options, the main one being to boom. If you can get a full eco going with burgers supplementing your main vills, you are absolutely golden. Though, of course, 
most enemies are not going to let you do that. You do still have the market on your side to help smooth out your economy, but your main benefit here is going to be your burgers, and you're going to want to stay on defense for the most part until you hit Imperial Age. Though, if you want, you could try some sort of cheeky knight thing, or maybe do a slow monk push with siege. It all depends on the map, and I do think Arena is going to be the land map where the Dutch will find the greatest success. Those sort of early Castle Age Arena matches will also allow them to make great use of their tough counter units, which which, alongside monks, could allow you to pin your opponent inside of their walls until you can get a couple mangonels in and maybe even clutch out the game before imp. Once you hit the late game, however, on most maps, you are going to be in a fantastic position. You have trash, you have gunpowder, you can slow push all day with an incredible economy backing you up. Like I said, trade carts functioning as like kinda conquistadors is going to be a huge part of your power in those scenarios. So definitely focus on getting those guys ready to go while your counter units screen for them out in the front. Time is on your side in these scenarios. You can almost always outlast your opponent, but you have to make sure that they can't punch through your defenses with a mass of arbalests and paladins or something like that. And on hybrid maps, your amazing navy will help support you endlessly. So that's my overview of the Dutch civilization. Let's just touch upon a couple of other thoughts that came across my mind as I was designing. Mainly the things that I weren't sure would work. The main concern I have for my build of the Dutch is they feel a little underpowered to me. They don't have a lot of synergy and are more a, a loose collection of interesting and thematic bonuses that might not work brilliantly together in practice. The other thing is, as mentioned, the Dutch could be divided into a couple of different civilizations. The Frisians, the Hollanders, the Flemish, the Zealanders, they're all very different people, so they're, it did feel a little weird to lump them all under the grand Dutch umbrella. And perhaps in future I will revisit subdividing this Dutch civilization into a couple of miniaturized versions. But until that point, as mentioned earlier, I do think that they are cohesive enough to fit together into one civilization, especially when you put them next to a civilization like the Slavs that is currently in Age of Empires that represents an even more broad and diverse group of people across a much larger geographical area. So. I'm a little torn, but as of now, at least, I think keeping them Dutch is the way to go. The other major loose thread I had is the technology Flemish Revolution. My design obviously steps majorly on the toes of this technology, currently for the Burgundians. The Flemish would be under the Dutch umbrella, so it wouldn't make sense to have this technology belong to another civilization. That all being said, no one really likes Flemish Revolution. I think it's like the single least popular tech in the game, so I say just replace it. The Burgundians are a very cool civilization, and I don't think it's fair to them to have such a swingy, disliked, and frankly misgrounded technology as one of the things they are best known for. So I would say replace it with something like patronage. The Burgundians were very well known for funneling money into states and powers that were on their side, and so I think it could be interesting for them to have a technology that for example, allowed them to research another civilization's castle and Imperial Age unique technologies after their own. And maybe if you didn't like those technologies, you could re-roll by re-researching patronage. Just a random idea. I think it's kind of cool, kind of thematic. Uh, but I think that focusing on a different element of the Burgundians, like patronage, would leave a lot more room for the Dutch and get rid of a tech no one likes in the process. Beyond that, however, I also wanted to go over a couple of the ideas that I had considered while designing this civilization that I decided to put to the side. The first one being that spear and skirm units could get melee armor per unit upgrade, which would leave the elite skirmisher with plus one and the halberdier with plus two. I obviously went for urban militias instead, but this was an idea I had in the meantime. I also thought it could be cool if their farms could be two by two, but have less food in the process if they didn't have space to place a three by three. I went with the water thing instead, but this was a close contender. Definitely a great idea, and I think it could work really well in another civilization. I also wanted to reference more of their Protestantism, like Free Heresy, for example, though again, I went with the monk thing instead to give them a different playstyle, rather than just giving them a swingy technology that they might not want anyways most of the time. Could have been cool if monks couldn't be converted, or if you could reconvert a unit that the enemy had converted almost instantly, but since monks are such a minor part of the game right now, it felt like a waste of a slot to give them this. In reference to the Battle of the Golden Spurs, I also thought it could be cool if all units, including Vils, had bonus attack versus monks, knights, and eagles, but again, seemed a little bit swingy, and I already had kind of an anti-cavalry bent in the first place, so I didn't want to overkill it, especially when monks aren't very well used in the first place. 
I also had a couple of alternative unique texts lined up for them. The first of which was Geldon, which was a, a type of long spear used at the Battle of Golden Spurs. This would give the spear line plus one range to allow them to function like Kamayuks, which, as cool as it was, seemed kind of overpowered, so I decided to move away from that. I also thought it would be cool to reference the sawmill by making it such that after a villager dropped off wood, you would get an additional trickle of wood over a small period of time, effectively multiplying the amount of wood that any given drop-off would give you. It was a cool idea, and I still like it, though I think that the consolidation of the mill and lumber mill was perhaps a little bit more of an elegant way of doing it than this. Lastly, I thought having golden spurs be an actual technology, giving you gold after you kill cavalry or eagle warriors, would have been a fun reference, but like I said, I didn't want to have the Civ be too focused on anti-cav, not to mention the opponent can just stop making cav or eagles. So in summary, not a fantastic idea, even if it might have been a cool Civ bonus or something like that. I also had an alternative unique unit called the Klauvard. Uh, this would have been a trash unit, like a unique trash unit. Godin Dog, once again, the iconic Godin Dog weapon, which is the weapon wielded by uh, Flemish militia. It's like a club spear. And I thought that them being low attack but ignoring armor like a Lytus could be a really cool way of distinguishing them, as well as being, again, a trash unique unit. So it would just have focused the Dutch majorly on trash warfare. But once again, it seemed like overkill to give them yet another trash unit, this one being good against armor. Still a cool idea that I might use in future, but for this particular build of the civilization, I'm happy with the burger and the Hellburner. And at last, we come to the end. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this Dutch Civilization overview. Before we finish off, let's look at the old likelyometer. On a scale of 1 to 10, how likely, in my opinion, is it that the Dutch Civilization will be introduced to AoE2 in future, especially in a form kind of similar to my build here? And for this installment of Robbie Lava Theory Crafting AoE2 Civs, the likelyometer turns up a... 9 out of 10. I think the Dutch are a shoe-in civilization for AoE2. They are one of the major Western European powers that hasn't been touched upon, and frankly the fact that we got the Burgundians before the Dutch is offensive to me. I want to have Rotepier in Age of Empires, goddammit, and maybe, just maybe, I have convinced you to want that too. So thank you so much for watching. I want to hear from you down in the comments. How did you like my build? And what would you have done differently? I do have a lot of weird, funky, offbeat bonuses in here. And like mentioned, I'm kind of worried the civilization will be underpowered. So if you can think of ways to tune them up in a way that stays thematic and engaging, I would absolutely love to hear from you. And lastly, what civilization would you like me to tackle next? Well, next after next, because coming up next, we have the Romans collab, which I've been sitting on for an awful long time and has deserved to see the light of day despite my busy schedule. But after the Romans, what would you like to see me tackle? Any given unit, any given civilization, any given topic, and the Age of Empires to ouvre. Please share with me. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, my name is Robbie Howell, and ciao for now.